But you guys got another PC build video here for you. These are the parts that we're going to be using here. Got some other parts as well. We'll go through these as we use them. Got the ASRock B550 Steel Legend motherboard. Really nice looking motherboard, this one. And uh, that's the one we're going to be using for this one. Also, we're going to go for the SSD NVMe by Crucial. This is the P3 Plus. Really nice uh, NVMe drive, this one. One terabyte in size. The Ryzen processor we're going to be using is the Ryzen 5. This is the 5600X at 6 cores and 12 threads. PCI Express 4.0 support. Very, very affordable processor, this one. If you're looking for a very affordable gaming processor, then the 5600X is a pretty decent uh, processor to go for. So let's get all this stuff out of the box and we can then start prepping the board ready for building. So what we're going to do first is prep the board. We're going to basically take off this heatsink here. This is an aluminium heatsink that is hiding where we want to put the SSD NVMe drive in there. So I need to remove these two screws here. This is quite a hefty chunk of aluminium and uh, this is going to help keep the actual NVMe drive nice and cool. Now you might be thinking that you just pull this off, but you need to go around the back here. There's a couple of little screws around here that we need to remove. Now this is a micro ATX motherboard and we're going to be using the Johnsbro D31 uh, case with the actual uh, eight inch display on the front of it. And I'll show you that a little bit later on. So now we've got the screws removed. We can remove this heatsink here. And as you can see, quite a hefty chunk of aluminium. And there is a thermal pad on the bottom there. So I need to remove that uh, bit of plastic there. And this will allow us to put in the drive. So let's go ahead. And what we're going to do here is we're going to go ahead and remove this packaging and put in the drive. Another question I get asked quite a bit is, do you need to remove this little tiny cover on here if you're using some sort of thermal pad or heatsink? And you don't need to remove this. It's not going to make any difference leaving this on or removing it. And uh, there's only going to be like one degrees difference or something like that. So it's always best to leave that on. Uh, otherwise, you might void your warranty as well. So we're just going to slot this in. And then we need to then remove the plastic on the bottom of our heatsink and then screw that back down. Now, you don't need an actual M.2 screw here because the actual screw for the heatsink is used for keeping the drive in place so you just got to line these up and i've got a tripod in the way here and it makes it a little bit difficult to see but we'll go ahead and line this up and get this screwed down now there's one little tip i'm going to give you here which is for the beginner pc builder here and i see it quite a lot on youtube where people use the wrong motherboards for the wrong cases although there is no real uh, written uh, rule for using the right motherboard for a particular case but basically i use micro atx motherboards with micro ATX cases and ATX motherboards for ATX cases and the same thing for ITX. I try to keep it like that and that way you get a much nicer finish on the build. Same thing for your uh, micro ATX. When you put a big uh, ATX case with a micro ATX motherboard you end up with those big gaping gaps at the bottom with all the cables dangling down which looks horrible. This is another problem area for a lot of beginner builders. They put the CPU in the wrong way and force it down and end up bending the pins. The pins on this particular chip are on the actual uh, CPU, whereas on the modern day uh, Ryzen processors, they're actually on the board. So they've gone down the Intel route of putting them on the board. So make sure you got this in the right orientation and uh, make sure that you're using this little triangle lined up with the board or it's a dot or a triangle, and then you can line these up and give it a little tiny wiggle, make sure it's all the way down and seated all the way down, and then push the retention lever back, and it's that simple. Any bits of plastic on the motherboard, just remove all of this, and on the power supply, just remove all that. We're going to go for the Frozen Note Heat. This is from a up-and-coming company. It's pretty decent. They're called Vermal Light, and they do some really... Uh, affordable products this was only 60 pounds for a 360 mil radiator with fans and uh, i didn't realize at the time of buying this that the pump is not the actual pump that you'll see down the bottom there it does fit uh, amd and intel but it's actually on the tubes they didn't show the picture of this on amazon which is another uh, a naughty thing that these companies do is they don't actually display a lot of uh, detail about it and of course i bought it and 
by then it was a little bit late so i couldn't do anything about it so i'll show you that a little bit later on in the video now i've got a couple of choices for ram i've got this line around here this is some white ram with some weird shape to it it is made of metal from team force here so i was going to use this ram but i ended up using the other ram there um, but that's the one i ended up using because that was 32 gigs and that's from team uh, force or team group that one so we're going to use this one for now and i'll swap it around a little bit later on as you'll see in the video so let's go ahead and pull these uh, little levers back these ones are fixed to the board now you can check your user manual to find out which uh, slots you need to populate i know which ones they are so i'm going to go ahead and populate these ones this is quite nice memory this one it's quite heavy memory i'm just going to slot this in the groove make sure it's orientated in the right direction and then you should hear a couple of clicks uh, and then push it into place now when inserting memory make sure the motherboard is seated on a, a nice firm surface like a table like this one and then when you push down it's not going to bend the board or anything like that because you do have to give it a bit of force and if it's on a cardboard box or something like that you could end up bending the middle of the board and uh, that can obviously uh, break a trace or something like that you really don't want to do that so let's move on to the next bit which is using this case here which is the d31 series from john's bro i wanted to give this case a little bit of a test to see what it looks like there is an actual uh, lcd display on the front here i think the resolution for that one is 1280 by 800 and uh, we can then use this so we've got a glass side panel here ventilation on top here this will accept up to a 360 mil rad up the top uh, of this particular case it's got a a unique design and i think john's bro have done a really good job at designing this the power cable here does run down this line here and then goes to the front area where the power supply will be which is going to be at the front of the case nice big opening on the back here channels for cable management a couple of areas for ssds here again there wasn't vast amounts of cable management if you populate all of the fans in here which is what i did and uh, of course it made cable management a little bit more difficult i'm just going to remove this later on but there's your lcd display here you can put on there thermal temperatures and sensor panels and things like that uh, we've got room here for the type c connector on the bottom and also audio and also type a uh, usb on the front and the power button here so yeah what we'll do is we'll get this all set up and then uh, hopefully this will look quite nice when it's done this is a removable panel you can just pop this off so you can use this as an external monitor if you wanted to and you can also put a little plate in there a little mesh cover which does come in a kit as well if you don't want to have the monitor on there if you wanted just to have it as a normal case you can do that so we do need to get the cables tidied up correctly here and i also want to uh, put in another couple of standoffs it does need a couple of standoffs here uh, for this micro atx so i need to get those which do come in the package as well for this case which all cases do have those in there it comes with all the screws and everything else that you'll need uh, to build your computer now this case is quite a unique design we've got a, a big 360 mil space up the top for a radiator the power supply has its little housing here no rubber grommets for the cable management area here but we do have room for a, an exhaust fan and also you can see here there won't be enough room here for a front fan unless you're not using the 360 mil rad you would have to push that right up and again you can do more uh, reading of the details of this case online and uh, it's it's not a cheap case it's in the 100 plus sort of range um, but you've got those little standoffs here that I need to put on for the actual board to be able to insert properly into the actual case. Let's go ahead and offer the motherboard up now and uh, we'll get this in situ. So we go ahead and put this in here. Now it does come with its own back plate, so we don't have to use a back plate for this one. Now I haven't removed the actual brackets. I've left the brackets on because this actual cooler uses the stock brackets on here. I do have access to the CPU power cable header up the top. If I didn't, I would have plugged that cable in already. But I do have clear access to that, which is a good sign. Just going to screw this up and get this screwed down 
uh, to the case so it doesn't move around. And then once we've done all that, we can then move on to the next step. I just need to remove this little side panel here now, and this will give me access to the actual power supply uh, shroud because it sits in its own little sort of bracket, really. And uh, that can be moved up and down. There is free settings there, depending on what you're going to be doing up the top of your particular case. You might only want a 240 mil. You can do this is going to have a full 360 mil up the top, which does make it a bit tight up the top there. And I'll show you the problems I run into a little bit later on uh, once we get to the uh, radiator. So I'm going to remove this here. And now we can see we've got that bracket system here. I'm going to go for this Rogstrix uh, 850 watt. Uh, power supply here. This is a 10 year warranty on this, and also it's Republic of Gamers, as you can see here. It is white and it's fully modular. Now, I went for the fully modular because I want to cut down on the amount of cables that we're going to be using because there's not a lot of room for cable management on the back of this particular unit. I do really like the look of this power supply. Also, it is super heavy, it really is for a power supply. So it reminds me of the old power supplies from yesteryear when they were really heavy. And it seems they've really sort of splurged on this one. It really is a decent uh, quality power supply. So we're going to get this into the case. Now, again, I can't stress enough how important it is to use uh, fully modular uh, power supplies. I see so many ch people cheaping out on power supplies on cheap budget builds. Yes, we can use cables like these if you want to but again that's going to cause more difficulty when it comes to cable management so i'm going to stick with these white cables that come with the actual uh, unit itself and what we'll do is we'll use those i was going to use these black and white ones but i think we're just going to stick with the white ones that come with it to keep down on cable management so i've got the bracket on here now just need to screw this in and then i'll get the cables inserted into the power supply and then put that into the case itself now, another thing I see a lot of people doing is using cheap power supplies. Yes, they are very cheap and they're cheap for a reason because it will be like a fireworks display in your case when it goes bang. So try to use good quality uh, power supplies and it will last for years. You won't have to replace it for many, many, many years. Again, this has a 10 year warranty, whereas some of them cheaper ones, they're just they're way hardly anything. They're as light as a feather and they're not worth the money and you're going to cause yourself a lot of problems so let's go ahead and get this into the actual uh, case here i need to make sure i've got this round the right way and then what we can do is we'll use this for drawing air from the outside into the actual power supply so i'll get this rotated and screwed up now once you've got this uh, in location it will hold itself there and that's because there's three little sections here where you can move the power supply up and down. So you can see this one just fits just nicely. Make sure you get your measurements right here. It's important. If you use a bigger, longer power supply, you're going to run into problems because it's going to start coming down uh, too low for the fans down below. So it's a very tight squeeze and you have to get all your measurements right here. Otherwise, you're going to run into problems. If you go up too high, you're going to run into the 360 mil rad up the top. I'm just showing you here the differences in heights that you've got here and the amount of cables that you're going to have to try to manage. And there's not many cables in here. I've left quite a few off. So there is a higher one here, and you're definitely not going to get that 360 mil rad up there with it in the highest position. So make sure you understand when you're picking your parts how it's going to work out for you. Okay, so let me tuck these cables in through the back here now because the cables has to go out the back and uh, you can see that I've hardly used any cables here at all but it's going to be enough for what I need for this particular build but if you do need to start putting hard drives in you can actually sit a hard drive down where the cables were and only use two fans on the bottom if you want to I'm going to be using three fans along the bottom but you can get a three and a half inch right there where my hand is on the bottom of the case here you can stick that there and it will fit in there lovely and that will be a three and a half inch uh, mechanical drive if you wanted to use one of those now this is the actual pump believe it or not and it's not now allowing me to have it in the orientation that i wanted to because this pump is now in the way and it's touching on the actual power supply no matter how low i go if i go too low it's going to then hit the fans on the bottom so 
They didn't show this on the pictures, and there's a reason why, because these are not the best 360mm reds with this pump here. The actual uh, pump is not the other part, it's that white bit on the hoses here. So I'm going to have to have it in this orientation. I'm going to get this into situ here, and then we can screw this in. But of course, this then causes another problem, where is the extraction fan, which is going to be on the other side, that big bulky uh, you know, pump is now going to be close to that fan. So I'm hoping it's going to work out OK, because I've had to make a change during the build. And this is quite a common thing that you're going to have to work out when you're building custom PCs, is you have to sometimes make changes on the fly, and it's something that is unforeseen. And uh, that's due to the manufacturer not producing enough pictures of that. And of course, there's a reason why, because I probably wouldn't have bought it because I didn't want the pump in that situation there. So it just goes to show you just to do your research. So there's the radiator now installed, and I've got some cables to deal with. There's quite a few of them. And you can see that pump up the top here. And uh, you can see I've got the, the actual pipes coming down this side. And I wanted them coming down here, bending over the back. but And that would have looked a bit cleaner, I think. But unfortunately, we're just going to have to have it this way. I've got to tuck all these cables through these holes up the back here. So I get them round the back so you can't see them. So I'm going to go ahead and tuck all those through and then we can then continue. So I've got all those tucked through now. I've got this CPU cable plugged in and there's still a bit of a mess down the bottom there. And I've got some cables here to deal with as well for the actual pump. We'll go ahead and we can get this onto the board as well. So let's go ahead and sort this out. And once that's done, we can then put the pump on. And again, make sure you remove that sticker on the bottom of the CPU cooler, because if you don't, you're going to end up with a problem. So let me just go ahead and get this into situation here. It's just a simple case of lining up the holes and twisting, and it's in. And all we need to do now is put a bit of thermal compound on. It goes in a certain way here. I've got to make sure it's in the right orientation here. Otherwise, it's not going to be on properly. And uh, I'm not looking at the user manual here. I'm actually just winging it, really. And there's a couple of little notches there I can see, which I need to line up and then twist so it makes sure the pump is in the right way. Because the thing with these pumps here, well, I keep calling it a pump, but it's not actually a pump. It's just the head of it. Um, but once you get these in the right or wrong orientation, the actual writing can be upside down. So you need to make sure that is correct. Let's go ahead and get some thermal paste here. They do give you some thermal paste uh, with this particular uh, cooler as well. So let's go ahead and just squirt that onto the CPU. And again, we're just going to either do what you like here, a line, a blob, three dots, you know, smear it, whatever you want to do, really. I'm just going to stick a load of it down there and get a bag and then just quickly uh, spread that across. And you've got a glove, you can use a glove. I haven't got a glove to hand. I'm just going to use the bag here. It's a soft bag. And then we're just going to smear this all around and make sure it's nice and covered all over the actual CPU here, and that should be good enough for what we need in this one. So let's get that all smeared across. Okay, so we got that all spread across, and now what we need to do here now is attach this. Now, I wasn't a fan of this connection back in the day. It used to be a bit of a nightmare getting the screw in and pushing and twisting out until you get it under the plastic hooks. And again, uh, this one I'm hoping is not going to be a nightmare to fit. And you can see those cables, the way those pipes, the way they're coming down here, they are going to be right where the graphics card is. So they'll probably help push those out a little bit so I can put a fan in, on the rear there. But we'll have to see what that's like in a second. I'm trying to push this down over the plastic clip. Sorry, you got my big arm in the way. And uh, I'm just trying to get the clip round. So I'm going to have to get a screwdriver here and push this down and clip it into position. I think I've managed to get that hooked round on one of them. So I'm just going to get a screwdriver here. And then what we'll do is I'll screw this down once I get the screwdriver on it, because I need to push in as I'm screwing and it will push the clip in. So there you go. So it's in now. And that wasn't too bad, to be honest. I've had worse ones than that where they've been a nightmare to actually get under the plastic hooks. And uh, that's good enough now. So I need to tighten this up. And uh, we're pretty much good to move on to the next step. That's now all done. What we need to do now is put the 24 pin in here. 
and I'm going to tuck that back through. There's no rubber grommets on these uh, cable management areas here that you see on the back here. And there's no combs in that kit, I don't think, unless I've put them somewhere else. I'm just going to push those in and tuck that back through. And hopefully uh, that's good enough. And I'll do all the other cables as well. And you can already see that watch of cables down the bottom there. I need to do something there, maybe use some uh, cable ties or something. Now, these are the fans that I had lying around. Again, it's from that uh, Thermal Light company. So I'm going to be using uh, some of their stuff along the bottom here. And this isn't sponsored by Thermal Light before everyone starts calling me some sort of shill in the comments section. And what I'm going to do here is we're going to go ahead and uh, get the cables all done for these uh, fans. Now I've got the fans in the positions I want them and you can see there's some sliders there so you can move them along if you want to and you can either have one, two or three depending on how many you want. I'm going to put three down the bottom here which obviously is going to make a lot more cable management issues because these are RGB which means you're going to have a power uh, cable and also an RGB cable so that's quite a lot of cables to deal with. So we can put these into the right positions here and tighten these up and they come with all the screws as well. And these are some of the cheapest fans that, that I could actually find that were white, really, to believe it or not, and they weren't a bad price. Okay, so we got those all screwed down, and again, we've got air going into the case here from the bottom because obviously the front is taken up by that power supply there. So you're not going to have no intake from the front here, so we will have to draw air in from the bottom. So we do have an extractor here on the back rear and we've also got the radiator at the top we have three fans on the top blowing air out the top as well now you can see here that pump is very close to the extraction fan on the back and again i might have to remove that if this pump is starting to impede on that fan i can't have that uh, in this build so it's not in the position i want it it's not turned out how i liked uh, it to turn out old wanted it up the top right hand side to come down there but that pump has caused a bit of a problem i could have brought the power supply down and then uh, with the pump removed it would have fitted okay but unfortunately i tried and it just looked horrible and it was getting in the way so i've had to have it this way i'm going to go ahead and uh, put some screws in here i'll probably replace that uh, 360 mil rad with a another type of radiator if I have the urge to do it, but we'll give it a go and see how it looks once it's done. So what I'm going to do here is screw this back in and we are ready to put the graphics card in. Okay, so that's now done and you can see we have a lot of cables to deal with and this is a big problem for these types of cases. If you're going to be doing this particular project, this is probably not a first time builder project. And again, this cables need to be tied in properly. I'm going to be using something like this big fan hub here to try and make things a little bit easier for myself uh, because there's a lot of cables here that need to be managed and the motherboard doesn't have a lot of fan headers on the board. So we're going to have to use something like this. Now, this is a very good little uh, fan hub because it does have 10 fans on here that it supports. It also supports RGB and also power, as you can see here. So we're going to go ahead and populate all of those. And they are four pin uh, fan heads on there as well. And this will then run one of these cables to the board and also SATA here as well for power. And we'll be able to control all of these as well. So let's go ahead and sort this all out because there is an absolute bird's nest of cables here that need to be sorted out. And I try to section them off into sections and then we'll try and uh, tie some of this back. Uh, into the case that so makes it a little bit more manageable. So I've done a bit of cable management here. I've tied some cable ties in here. Again, I don't like using too many cable ties because obviously if you ever have to work on it, it's just a nightmare to have to cut all these off. So I just want to keep it reasonably tidy and I've probably used more than what I wanted to. You've got rooms for SSDs on the bottom here. We're not going to be populating any of these, but I don't want to take up these areas here just in case someone does want to put an SSD in here at some point. So I'll probably use the middle strip there and we'll use that area for the cable uh, management with the fan hub there. Now, thankfully, this is not for a client or anyone like that, so I don't have to be too 
crazy on the cable management. So I think I'll put it somewhere here uh, and then we'll leave it there. It does look a little bit messy still, but that's what fan hubs are. They've got all the fans in here. I need to reroute these cables here a little bit and push these back. And hopefully the side panel will still fit on there without any issue. If it if it's a problem, I'll move it. Now, again, depending on the length of the cables will determine where I can put that fan hub as well. I'm going to go ahead and fit in the GPU now. And uh, what we'll do is we'll get this fitted in. And we're just going for the ASRock Steel Legend to match the motherboard. It's only a, a 7600, but again, it's a pretty cheap build. What we'll do is we'll get this into position and we'll slot this in. And you can see it ties in with the motherboard really nicely. And that's the secret to getting a good looking PC and it's picking the right parts for your build. So they all tie in together. And I think we're okay with that fan. It's turned out okay in the end. There is a big bulbous, uh, you know, pump there, but there's not a lot I can do about it it's until I replace that uh, 360 mil rad. If I replace that 360 mil rad, the tubes are okay. They're not kinked or anything like that. So they should be okay. And because the graphics cards there, it's pushing that up a little bit keeping it away from the actual fan. So it turned out okay in the end. Just need to get the uh, cable in. So I've gone down the side there, as you can see, a little bit more fat limb of the cables I need to do. But again, this is just a video, as you can see here. Turned out okay. I changed the RAM out. I think that RAM looks a little bit better in there. Got all the colors synced in. It's probably not the most tidiest build that I've done in the world. But again, I can fit all that a little bit later on. But I do think it turned out pretty nice. And uh, we got that nice screen on the front here as well. I've not even uh, finished sorting that out yet. I've got to configure that to change some of the icons and get it working the way I want. But these are sensors that you can have. You can change the panels on there as well. But it does look absolutely stunning. It does look pretty nice. Again, like I said, uh, not too happy with some things on this build. But again, it's not for anyone in particular. It's just going to be sitting there in a box doing nothing. So really, uh, it should be OK. Let me know in the comment section below what you guys think of the build and whether it turned out OK. And uh, some of the things I could have done better. I know some of the things like the pump on the uh, tubes. I'm not really a big fan of that. And also the uh, cable management could be a little bit better. But again, I'm not really too sure whether I'm going to stick with that sort of configuration. But other than that, I think it turned out OK. My name has been Brian from brightechcomputers.co.uk. Just want to say a quick shout out to all my YouTube members who join my YouTube members group. I appreciate the support. I shall catch you in the very next video or I'll see you on the Discord server for a chat. Happy New Year to everyone. I wish you all the best in the new year. Bye for now.